The story began a long time ago, a very long time ago when our master Joseph brought his his family, the children of our master Jacob, from the desert and they lived in Egypt for a while. They were working as employees and workers for the king in Egypt, their number began to increase, and over time the pharaoh enslaved them and made them taste all kinds of torture and humiliation until when God sent our master Moses to them to save them from the humiliation of pharaoh. Our master Moses took the children of Israel, our master Jacob, took them out of Egypt to escape the enslavement of Pharaoh. He crossed the Sinai desert with them. After our Lord destroyed Pharaoh and saved them, they worshipped the calf. Our master Moses worked very hard with them. Of course we knew their stories from the Quran, and why did God become angry with them and turn them into apes and pigs? Because of their much disobedience and stubbornness. The important thing is, when our master Moses asked them to repent and create for themselves a homeland and a state in which they could settle. The promised land what God promised to the descendants of our master Abraham, the land flowing with honey and milk, but in order to take it, they must fight to have the right to this land. The Jews at that time were cowardly, as usual, and were afraid to fight with our master Moses, they said to him, We will not fight with you, nor will we enter that land because there are tyrannical people in it. Who can kill us? We will not enter it unless they leave it. Our master Moses told them not to be afraid, once you enter the gate of the city. You will defeat them. Listen to the words of our Lord. They did not accept and disobeyed our Lord and said to our master Moses, You go and fight, you and our Lord. We are sitting here and we will not move from our place. At this point, our Lord was very angry with them and sentenced them to diaspora across the earth, they would not have a homeland or a state until the end of time, as a punishment for disobeying our master Moses and disobeying the commands of our Lord. Since then, they have been scattered throughout the land, having no homeland. They lived after that throughout history, dispersed, each group in different places. Sometimes were periods of prosperity for them. They lived in Palestine like the days of our master Solomon, who built a temple for them so that they could worship our Lord in it and offer sacrifices. This temple have to be completed with us after that. There were some periods in which they were suffering, such as the period of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, who enslaved them, kept them as slaves to him and his people. But they always had a dream and hope that they would have a homeland and a state in which they could live and settle down like the rest of the people. But this will not happen except when God is pleased with them at the end of time. They know this well, and based on what is written in their books, this will not happen except when they sacrifice. Five red cows in the temple, Solomon's temple, approached God and repented for everything they had done. Therefore, they bought the red cows and kept searching for the temple, with great hope that it would be under Alexa Mosque. They were excavating and making excavations while aiming to demolish Alexa Mosque. They dig under it and may find the alleged structure. Of course, Muslims will never allow them to do this. That is why they do not fight the Palestinians just to take their land, but to reach Alexa Mosque and demolish it. This explains the secret of the Arab and Islamic world stance with their Palestinian brothers. Because of the importance of Alexa Mosque to Arabs and Muslims throughout history, because it is the second most sacred place after the Holy Kaaba, because it was the first Qibla of prayer for Muslims and the place of pilgrimage of the Messenger Muhammad, peace upon him. Which the Muslims were always trying to recapture and fight the enemies every time it was taken. Like what happened by Saladin al Ayyubi when he reclaimed Al-Aqsa Mosque from the hands of the Crusaders and defeated them after they seized it. The Jews lived in countries of the world and tried to assimilate with different civilizations and cultures, meaning they lived in every country and behaved as the people of the country behaved, but they always failed because their attempts to imitate the people were in conflict with the teachings of the Torah and their religion and because of their racism because they considered themselves God's chosen people from one family, the tribes. Those who are the children of Israel and even their religion cannot be entered into by anyone whose origin is not from the Jews. I mean, not from their family. This left them isolated from the people. They began to have philosophers and theoreticians, and some of them recently embraced communist thought and even reached the point of atheism, 
they began to form radical groups and organizations like the Zionists. These Zionists are a group formed on a Jewish background, but they are not religious at all. Rather, they have an atheistic, communist ideology, which means a political and colonial doctrine. They want to gain power and rule, create a state in which they feel special and that they are God's chosen people and control the world. That is why the governments in the countries were discovering their plans and thwarting them, and they ended up remaining isolated and outcast, until Hitler came to power in Germany during the Second World War and exposed their secret plans, he tried to carry out ethnic genocide in order to relieve humanity from them and the Jews in Germany he burned them and warned the world about them. The Zionists took advantage of this Holocaust incident and tried to entreat the whole world to obtain benefits that would compensate them for burning Jewish families alive. In fact, they exploited politics and economics and used all malicious methods such as prostitution, gambling, and drugs to achieve their goals and were able to obtain a promise from the British Prime Minister at the time, whose name was Balfour. He promised them that he would create a country for them that would gather them from all over the world. Balfour chose a country that was under British occupation at the time, which was Palestine, among several other proposed countries. And instead of giving them a region in England, for example, he gave them a weak region that belonged to the Muslim Arabs who were beginning to weaken at that time. After the collapse of the Islamic Caliphate in Istanbul and the Arab countries began to be divided into many states and sections. Those who do not have gave to those who do not deserve. At that time, they announced the establishment of their state in Palestine, which they called Israel and they began to announce to the whole world their invitation to the Jews to immigrate to Israel, and they promised them that they would live in a state as if it were God's paradise on earth. Indeed, some Jews from all countries of the world responded to them, from Europe, America, and Russia, Africa and everywhere in the world. They blamed all the scum in the world, all the idots and obedient Jews who did not know how to live in their country brought them and formed an army with which they were able to defeat the Arabs in 1948 and expel the Palestinians from their lands. Since then, with the support of the great power countries that provided them with money and weapons, they were actually able to be a small but powerful country. They had the most modern weapons in the world and they were able to develop the country, grow their economy and receive tourists from the whole world to visit the most beautiful beaches, farms, and cities in the world. They made major projects and investments, and advanced in education and research, with the support of the largest countries in the world, but all of this was at the expense of our Palestinian brothers, who gradually turned into guests in their land and tenth-class citizens. This is other than those they abandoned and dispersed in the world and this is other than those who are killing and capture them every now and then under the pretext that they are terrorists. The Palestinians are not terrorists. The Palestinians are defending their right to their land that was usurped by the Zionists. The Palestinians are not weak. The Palestinians are truly a mighty people, despite all that is happening to them of enslavement, assault, killing, and captivity, the Zionists have never lived. Peakley. They defeated them. They always live in fear of them. The Palestinians are heroes and those who die are martyrs. I tell the whole story, so that the generations do not forget the story, so that the misleading media do not change the facts, because of the loud voices of the Zionists, even if they succeed in deceiving the world, they will never be able to change the facts, nor will ever be able to make the generations forget the origin of the story.